Good evening and welcome to Shepherd's Heart Christian Fellowship. Good evening to each one of you who is joining us here in the sanctuary and good evening to each one of you who is joining us online. We are so thankful that you've chosen to worship with us this evening. I have a couple announcements for you this evening. Um, Lisa Fest, one of our elders, is still on vacation until Monday, May 2nd. Um, so if you normally reach out to her for pastoral care or counsel and you are in need, please call one of the elders and we will be so happy to assist you. Um, Ron and I just had a couple things happen this week where we just were able to lean on the support of our spiritual community and know that we could reach out at any moment and have people standing with us in prayer. Like to reach out via text and go, hey, I need prayer right now. And then to call in the person to say, hey, I've been praying since I got that text, right? And so I just wanna encourage each one of you to lean into community, not just the elders who were obviously here to support you, but onto each other, right? We are stronger together, we go further together. Um, I know it's one of those cliches where it's like no man is an island, but truly you do not want to do life alone, okay? It is not good. It is not awesome. Um, you do not want to be isolated. You do not want to be alone. So build that network, build that community, reach out for support, okay? Because we are here to love and to support you. Um, I've been saying for the last couple of weeks, the March of Remembrance, that is tomorrow. So if you are looking to be part of that, make sure you grab the bulletin so you have the times and the location. Um, or to, if you're joining us online, to look at the announcements on the website so that you have all the information that is necessary. That is time to um, observe um, the Jewish Holocaust Remembrance Day. Okay, so please, if that is something you're looking to do, that is tomorrow. Do not miss it. Make sure you have all the information you need. On May 20th, there will be a catered women's dinner at 6 p.m. here in the Fellowship Hall. That is for ages 14 and older. Our guest speaker is Gloria Cotton. The cost is $10 per person. Um, if you are wanting to attend, if you're a lady who's part of this house and that it would be a financial burden or a point of stress for you, please let us know. Please do not let finances um, obstruct you from being part of what's going on that evening, okay? We will always make a way for you if finances are an issue. Okay, so the deadline to sign up is Sunday, May 15th. Since that is a catered dinner and we will need to give our count, the sign up is right out there, or you can send it in via email. We also do need support with setup and cleanup. So if you're available for that, please um, let us know. Um, <clears throat> something else that's coming up and that we will be announcing formally in the next couple of weeks is our Pentecost potluck dinner, which will be on Sunday, June 5th. Um, you guys know that we celebrate the feasts, okay? So we just celebrated the Feast of Passover, and here at Shepherd's Heart, we celebrate that in homes, okay? So we had a number of host homes, we had a number of families celebrating in small groupings, okay? And then we're coming up on Pentecost. And how we celebrate Pentecost here is we do it here at the church. This year it's on Sunday, June 5th. Um, and we have a potluck dinner. And then the reason why I'm bringing this up is because we follow that with a testimony service. Okay, so I realize not everybody has participated in how we do Pentecost here. Um, and I just wanted to make it clear because our testimonies during that time are specifically focused around the things God has done from Passover, um, which was mid-April, through to that day of Pentecost in June 5th. And so I wanted to make a special point of calling that out so that you were observing what God was doing, right? So that he is working, he is doing things, but that you are making special note of it in this time. So that when we gather together on June 5th, you are able to declare the goodness of the Lord and how good he was in that 50 day period. Okay, so I just want to make sure I underscored it for those of you who may not be aware of it um, or those of you who maybe have celebrated, but it just wasn't in your radar because we're in the middle of this time. And so testimonies are such an encouraging thing, right? Testimonies are such an encouraging thing because what God's done for you, he is willing to do for someone else. So your testimony of healing, your testimony of provision, your testimony of overcoming empowers and equips the rest of our community to continue to go forward. So I just really want you to be paying attention over these next weeks so that we can take that time to celebrate his goodness for us and his continued goodness and faithfulness to us. 
So the month, okay, confession time. I never look up the pronunciation of the Hebrew words, and then I, I regularly regret it when I stand up here and I, I'm not quite sure how to say it. Um, so if you are a Hebraic scholar, forgive me, I am not, okay? So the month of Iyer, 5782, is the second month in God's cycle of appointed times, and so that starts tomorrow at sunset and will continue until sunset on Monday, May 30th. And so God has appointed times and seasons, just like I was talking about the feast just now. He has appointed times and seasons and cycles, right? And so when we step into the way that he has ordered time, we really see some really powerful things occur. Can you have an abundant and fulfilling Christian life without knowing any of these things? Sure right? But I have found such a uh, fruit and freedom in knowing about the structure of the year and in the structure of the months and really recognizing uh, how apropos it is at any given moment. Like I will frequently go, oh wait, that's what he's been talking to me about. And so just knowing that I'm stepping into something that God created and that he's not just talking to me about that, he's talking to my brothers and sisters around the world about the same different things. So if you weren't sure why we every month kind of stand up and talk about this and it doesn't seem to have anything to do with the regular calendar that's why okay so IR starts on Sunday May 1st at sunset and will continue until sunset on May 30th IR is linked to the tribe of Issachar and in 1st Corinthians 12 um, it says that Issachar were met the tribe of Issachar were men who had understanding of the times they had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. So this is a month to gain supernatural wisdom in worship and to receive prophetic perspective on your times and your seasons. This is the month to gain understanding on how to rest in the Lord as you battle for your promises and birth his vision for your future this year. I'm gonna say that one more time, okay? This is the month to gain understanding on how to rest in the Lord, how to rest. If I had one of those writers and I could write in the sky, I'd write it in giant letters. How to rest, highlighted, bold, underline, 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 okay? All right, how to rest in the Lord. As you battle for your promises, resting does not disconnect you from warfare. In fact, it equips you and moves you forward, okay? So as you battle for your promises and birth his vision for your future this year. Being associated with Issachar, IR is a month to learn to live in tune with God. And as you do it, this is the month to gain an increase in an Issachar anointing, to gain an, under, um, to gain an increase in understanding the times, okay? Issachar was a peaceful tribe and bore the burden between Judah and Zebulon. The entire month of Iyar is a time of refinement. As we count the Omar, this is days 16 to 44, so they would, um, it's, a, it's a long-standing feast where from uh, Passover all the way to, to Pentecost, they would count. It was from when the first sheaves of barley, I think it was, appeared, right, all the way until the day, okay? So we are to count the Omar of our blessings. Iyar is a month to understand the secrets of God. Right in Proverbs, it says, um, it is the glory of God to conceal a matter and the glory of kings to search it out, okay? IR, also called Zeev, is the month to radiate, a month in which light increases, signifying increased revelation. If darkness tries to overtake you this month, say, no, I am increasing in revelation. Okay, so we rebuke the strategies of the enemy and we say, no, I'm increasing in revelation. Isaiah 60 tells us the glory can be seen on you and it radiates from you. Let his shadow in you displace the darkness around you. Israel Independence Day celebrating 72 years as a sovereign nation is IR5 and will be celebrated on IR4 this year, which is May 5th because it falls on a Shabbat in Israel. Jerusalem Day, IR28 is on Sunday, May 29th, 2022. IR is a month about timing. Israel had crossed over. They stopped because they got thirsty and they ended up murmuring and complaining. But in Exodus 15, 26, God revealed himself as Jehovah Rapha. The Hebrew letters for IR, right? So if you see the letters, it's those same letters, but it's Jehovah Rapha and it spells out the promise God gave in his Exodus 15, 26. I am the Lord, your healer. IR is referred to as a month for natural healing. Let go of murmuring and complaining and instead say, I like see that he is saying, I can heal you. Watch your speech this month. 
IR is associated with the right kidney, so each month is associated with a tribe, with a portion of your body, with a letter, with a constellation, okay? So it's associated with the right kidney, which cleanses us. Our kidneys cleanse our body. So God not only wants to cleanse impurities from your physical body, he also wants to deal with your conscience, your thought processes, and your emotions. IR is a month to set the course for both your inward and your outward watching. Then your conscience will come alive. IR is associated with the Hebrew letter Vav and is the hinge month, connecting the month of redemption, which is when Passover was, with the month of giving, which is when Pentecost is. Especially in 5782, this is the month to allow God to prepare your heart so he can speak heaven into earth through your voice. This is the month to allow God to prepare your heart so he can speak heaven into earth through your voice. Ayer is associated with the constellation Taurus, the bull, and is a month of moving forward from strength to strength. As you worship and seek God during Ayer, meditate upon him and let him refine you. Revelation will increase and mysteries will be revealed to you in a new way. One of the ways that we encourage you guys to observe the start of a new month is to feel free to give a first fruit offerings, okay, which is just like an extra offering, okay, to signify that you are dedicating this month to the Lord, right? And so that can look a lot of different ways. Um, but at any point during the service, you can feel free to give any of your tithes or offerings into the baskets right up here in the front. We're entering a season of increased revelation. So if you have a prophetic word that's for the body during the service, please feel free to come and see me right here at the front and I'll release you to the microphone at the appropriate time, okay? Um, during prayer, we... Uh, there were so many excellent choruses developed during prayer, right? So if you can get here during that hour before service and engage, right, you will see like just that there is so much language given to the deep movings of our heart, right? Um, but today, one of the choruses that specifically spoke to me was they were singing about how God is the same and he's never changing. They're singing through a lot of different things around that. And so I'm just gonna, I wanna open the service, connecting us right back to where we were in prayer. Okay, so I'm just going to ask them to just go back into that place and into that chorus, right? So we're starting service right now. So just get yourself in a posture of worship, okay? Get yourself in a posture of prayer. I invite you to stand if you want to stand, okay? So this is where we're going to start. I'm going to pray over this a little while while they're singing. And I just encourage you to enter in to this revelation that God, his love, his word, his faithfulness, is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and that he never changes. What he did then, he will do now. What he did for her, he will do for you. What he did for him, he will do for you. Okay?
shaking, falling down around us, but he doesn't change, and that's our hope. All of the idols of this world, all the things that people put their trust in, are falling apart as we watch, but he's unchanging, and that is our hope. No matter what the circumstances look like, we can stand boldly and say that my God doesn't change, and he is faithful.
Yes, Lord. 
for the women in the room um, and those of you online of course as well but I have a word specifically for the women um, and so it was a word that came to me as a picture so when I was dancing just now and I had the two streamers at one point they locked up together right and so they got stuck right and so like a knot was starting to form and so the temptation was to stop to stop and untangle it and then keep going right and but so I felt oppressed to just keep going and so as I continued, they separated, and then everything was free-flowing again. And so women of this house, the Lord would say to you that when you are moving in his presence, there will be a tangle and a knot. There will be bumps in the road. There will be things that happen, situations that are gnarly, right? That are gnarled, that are stuck together. And the temptation would be for you to stop and put your eyes on the problem. But the Lord would say to you to continue to move in his presence, to continue to keep your eyes focused on him and to let him take care of the knot. Let him take care of the problem. Let him take care of the snarl. The knot is not yours to deal with. Okay, the K-N-O-T knot is not an O-T yours to deal with. I'm going to say that again. The knot is not yours to deal with, says the Lord. He says, it is mine. It is mine. He says, it is your job to pay attention to him. Okay, he says, it's your job to keep your eyes focused on him and to let him take care of the bump in the road, to let him take care of that which seems to be cocking up the plans. He wants your gaze. He wants your focus. He wants your eyes. He doesn't need your hands on the problem. Jesus, oh, we want the deeper flow. Jesus, we want the deeper flow Jesus just ask we want the deeper flow Lord Jesus we ask for the deeper flow just ask him now say Lord Jesus Jesus we want the deeper flow deeper flow Lord Jesus we want the deeper flow deeper flow Jesus, we want, we want the deeper, deeper flow, deeper flow, Lord Jesus. Oh, we want the deeper flow, deeper flow, Jesus. We want the deeper flow. We want to go deeper, deeper. We want the deeper flow. We want to go past where we've been. We want to go deeper than we've ever been. Deeper than we've ever been. Take us deeper, Lord. Take us deeper, Lord Jesus. Jesus, we want the deeper flow, deeper flow. Lord Jesus, Jesus, we want the deeper flow, deeper flow. Jesus, take us over our heads. Take us over our heads. Take us over our heads in the river of your love, in the river of your spirit, Jesus. Jesus. We want to swim in the river of your 
deeper flow, deeper flow out into the world. Hey, deeper flow out into the world. We will go, we will go out into the world. Deeper flow, deeper flow. We will go, we will go, we will go out in the deeper flow. So at this time, we're going to prepare ourselves for communion. Um, so those of you who are joining us online, please take a moment uh, to get your communion elements ready and prepared <clears throat> as we're preparing in this house as well. And so um, just a few moments ago, uh, Justine approached me and shared a picture that she had. Um, and I really feel like it's for the congregation. It's for this moment. And specifically, it's the theme for our communion tonight. So I'm going to ask her to share um, so I had a picture of a person, they were walking forward, um, eyes towards the Father, and I saw Jesus walking behind them, picking up, um, which in the, the picture were identified as seasons or um, times in their past that were marked by pain or hurt or difficulty, and I saw Jesus following behind her, picking up those pieces or those seasons and replacing them with pieces of gold. And I just felt like um, God said, you know, as we keep our eyes fixed on the Father, Jesus is going to come behind us and take some of those moments of our past, and he's going to replace them with something of worth and value. I was going to try to look up these lyrics really fast, so I'm going to free flow it because I don't have them right now. Um, but there was a song that was really popular in the 90s, and it's based out of the Bible, but it was Beauty for Ashes, right? And it was like, um, the chorus went, I'll give you beauty for ashes, right? Mm, what time is it? Beauty for ashes. Strength for fears, promise for mourning, peace for despair. I had to do a little song there, right? And so... Think about that, that moment, what Justine was just sharing, what those lyrics are, right? Where it says in Isaiah, right, that he gives us beauty for ashes, right? That he gives us garment of praise for the garment of mourning, right? And so those moments, those painful moments, those things that you think about and you kind of flinch back from, right? Those things that in the middle of the night pop into your brain, that I can't believe I moments, or the ones that bring you to tears because they're still painful to think about. God is inviting you into a divine exchange tonight. A divine exchange. Where you get to put down those things, those painful things, those shameful things, those things that are used to condemn you or to torment you. And in return, Jesus gives you gold and silver and precious stones. And so tonight, as we're doing communion, 
It's the picture of that, right? It's the picture of that. Where Jesus' body was broken for us. His blood was spilled for us. And then just even when we take the physical act of communion, not even everything it represents, but in the physical act of communion, we come forward with our hands empty and we receive something. Okay, so tonight, I'm just going to encourage you, going to encourage you, whatever that looks like for you. I'm a physical person, right? So I like to do physical acts. So a physical act that I would invite you into is to think about those things, those moments, whatever is coming to mind for you right now, and to mime out setting the thing down or throwing the thing behind you, right? Casting it off and then coming forward and receiving this representation of his precious blood, of his precious body, knowing that his blood was shed to wipe away your sins, to wipe away pain, right? His body was broken for your healing. That was the vision that was shared last week. I want you healed. I want you delivered. As he was being whipped, as he was being prepared to be whipped, I want you healed. I want you delivered. And this is right on that same theme. We are being invited into a divine exchange, into a holy moment. And so I encourage you not to let this moment pass you by. So whatever it looks like for you, if I invite you into that physical, just tossing, laying down, setting aside as Tiffany invites you forward.
Father, we thank you that you do not deny a heart that is desperate for you. We thank you that you do not deny a heart that is desperate for you. And so right now we release those things that have weighed us down. We release those things that have weighed us down. Those burdens that we have carried for far too long. The yoke that we have been tied to that is not of you. So we release those burdens. We release that yoke that's not yours. We release shame and condemnation. We release pain and torment. And God, in exchange, we take on your peace, your joy, your garment of praise, your healing body, soul, and spirit. Holy Spirit, we invite you in as the balm of Gilead to soothe those wounded places. We thank you that your blood and your body is for our full healing to bring us into life and life abundant. And so, God, we say that your yoke is easy, your burden is light, and we enter into the rest of the Lord. And so we say that this bread is your body broken for us, and we take it and we eat in remembrance of all that you've done. And we could say that this cup represents your blood shed for us for the remission of our sins. We take and drink in remembrance of you. We receive your healing in Jesus' name.
early in the service I had an impression that the Lord wanted me to pray for some specific things and I've been waiting for the moment of the release and when Caitlin flagged that's when I just felt like that was the release that was the moment and so um, <clears throat> a quick testimony um, at the end of January during worship um, Lisa Fass came up to me and said she had a word for me right and so she asked me a couple of specific questions and she had a word of knowledge around some brain stuff that I deal with, right? One of which is migraines, right? And so she prayed for healing for migraines and for some other stuff and everything. And she went back, you know, we normally sit one row in front of each other and she went back and I felt, I've, I've shared another healing story in which I felt the fire of God just on me, okay? And so I felt it again, right? And I felt it all up in my brain right like it felt like things were rewiring and reconnecting and like lisa commented how like kind of odd it looked from behind because i was like oh oh <laughs> right because it was caught me so off guard right and so i feel like tonight the specific thing um that's why i focused on the migraine thing and not some of the other stuff is i really feel like the lord is releasing healing around migraines and like i said other brain stuff right so if you have brain things physical brain things that manifest in a physical incapacitating way in your life migraines being one of the ones that i'm specifically calling out okay um but Also, I would say concussions, right? And I would say other debilitating things, even the other thing that's coming to my mind is whiplash, right? Like that, you know, trauma that happens. Um, so I would like to take a moment and pray for people who are suffering from migraines, people who are suffering from other trauma, including concussions, including whiplash, okay? Um, and so if that's you, I just invite you to stand right now. You're welcome to stand anyway, but particularly if you're suffering with that um and if you feel comfortable i would love to call you forward so i can anoint you um i'll let you smell it first if you have issues right but so i can anoint you and pray over you okay so i'm going to pray over us as a whole and then i'd love for us to just continue worshiping and i'll pray in a line okay and so lord i thank you <clears throat> I thank you that this is an appointed moment for healing. I thank you that this is an appointed moment for restoration. I thank you right now, Lord, that you are undoing physical damage that is done, Lord. That you are rewiring and reconnecting neurons and causing them to fire in the appropriate ways and in the appropriate means, Lord. That you are releasing tensions and nerves that do not function as they're supposed to. That you are releasing muscles that, in fact, you're aligning spinal cords and where it goes up into our skull and all the little bones that go along in our skull, God, that you are aligning us, God, that you are aligning physical body right now so that they can step into the abundant life of the Lord. And so, Lord, we invite your healing presence, your healing fire right now in Jesus' name. And so you guys can just come forward and I'll meet you right there.
nothing you can't heal. There's nothing you can't heal. Take you at your word. There's nothing you can't heal, God. There's nothing you can't heal. There's nothing you can't heal, God. We'll take you at your
Father, we thank you. Because you are good. And Lord, I thank you, O oh God, for the courses that were sung, that have embedded themselves in our hearts, O oh Lord, that we will tell what you've done. Lord, I pray that you would help us to remember and to consider, O oh Lord. Help us to remember and consider, my God. This time is yours. Our lives are yours. Lord, I pray that we'd be able to even say with confidence, the words that we use are yours. Lord, speak through us, O oh Lord, to declare your goodness, that we would further your kingdom with our words. In your holy and mighty name, all God's people said, Amen. Amen. I'm going to give a really brief turn signal. I will say this, I promise you, I will not keep you late. And the Lord has given me plenty of time just to encourage your heart. So I'm only going to give a little bit of an introduction because for those of you guys who do not know, I'll be preaching again next week. So I don't feel like I've lost any time at all, <laughs> at all. I, I really felt um, like the Lord was doing what he ne really needed to do today with some of our hearts it's funny as I was looking up here you know your your mind starts racing does anybody else's mind race a little bit when the Lord is doing things and we're trying to hear Lord what are you doing how am I supposed to participate how am I supposed to engage Bob I'm gonna give you an FYI you're not going anywhere just stay right there the whole time um but how am I supposed to engage? What am I supposed to be doing? And I was just sitting here in the back thinking, you know what, I could probably make that prayer line a little bit more efficient if I just stood up there and just interceded with my wife for everybody. And I was like, no, I'm going to stand with my daughter. You know what I mean? And sometimes you have to make a different decision, whether for your family or for somebody else or something. You're just like, this is what I'm going to do. She's got it. The Lord is doing what he needs to do. And it's awesome. It's simple and it's awesome. Sometimes we over insert ourselves in things that we ought not to insert ourselves in and just let the cards fall as they may. Amen. So it's funny because honestly, there's not even that much I necessarily need to say because so much of my message is that I, again captured in the prayer time, captured in the um, in the prophetic words that were shared or the exhortations that were given the the courses that were sung and I, my mind was racing even from the very beginning when my wife was dialoguing about it being in the month of Adar and um, Adar um, IR IR Adar Adar yeah, so therefore all the Hebrew folk are laughing at me too, right? I, I said it all wrong. I wrote it down. You know, it's funny, just as a reminder to everyone, especially at times like this, I have to encourage us to honestly pull out a pen and paper, you know, and write the things down that the Lord highlights. All right? There are things that he highlights that we're supposed to meditate on, to consider, to ponder, um, just to think about for extended periods of time. You heard me say last time during the worship service that sometimes what we've been experiencing, or at least the best way I could exp uh, explain what I've ex in, been experiencing in this house feels very much like those Marvel movies. You know, and the reason why I say that is because the storyline is so layered and the more you watch, the more, the bigger the picture gets. Now again, take note, I'm not advertising those movies at all. I'm just trying to paint a picture of the fact that if we go to different things, if we pay attention to different things, if we take certain things into consideration, we do get a chance to see a bigger picture. One of the things that the Lord was encouraging me to highlight was prophetic history. I've been thinking about it over and over and over again, taking time to consider and to meditate on my own personal prophetic history, the church's prophetic history, the prophetic history of the body of Christ at large. What has God said prophetically? What has God said in dreams or visions? What has God said in his word? And are you actually looking at the big picture in the backdrop to get a little bit more clarity and context to what God is trying to tell you as to what God's trying to tell you in this moment as to what you should be doing in this season and unfortunately 
many of us even have been given the prophetic words even in this house and we never go back to look at them again we remember vaguely what's going on or vaguely what he said but did you actually make it a dialogue when he has spoken to you do you make it a dialogue do you wrestle through certain things even when we're spending time in scripture one of the things that i find incredible with many believers is that we spend so much time in the scriptures but we don't even pray through them we don't talk to the lord about them we don't say lord what are you trying to say here because come on now let's be honest how many of y'all actually read that thing all the time and understand what he's talking about exactly so if you don't understand what he's talking about if your wife says something you don't know what she's saying you be like wait baby say that one more time right am i the only one that says that or when my kids are talking i'm like wait hold it baby run that back one more time you just left daddy back yesterday right if we ask for clarity from one another why wouldn't we ask clarity from the lord ask for clarity i will say this i'll give you a couple things to consider I had a couple of my quotable statements and I'll just give a few of them. I have a goal. Okay. And my goal is to get us coherently lost and intoxicated with the mystery and the nature of the effects of God's powerful and faithful love. Now it's funny. I, I will say it again. Thank you, baby. A. For those of you guys who want to write that down. I have a goal. And it almost sounds like this does, it contradicts, but I'll explain. To get us coherently lost and intoxicated with the mystery of the nature and the effects of God's powerful and faithful love. I have a goal to get us coherently lost and intoxicated with the mystery of the nature and the effects of God's powerful and faithful love. Now the funny thing is when you say intoxicated, obviously that's under the influence of strong substances and you have lost control. Yes, that's the word I wanted to use. Where you lose control. Because the funny, the, the thing is when it comes down to passion for the Lord, it will offend people right maybe you are a little little more righteous than i or your family is more righteous than i but maybe you've never been in the company of somebody who was under the influence of something and the funny thing is the things they do sometimes offends you has anybody been there somebody under the influence of something and all of a sudden they say or do stuff that offends you i need us to be the same when it comes down to the things of the lord where we are intoxicated but the thing is, we are so lost, not because we just lose control for the sake of losing control, but we are just lost in his faithful love for us. My message today was going to ride on various men in the Bible who have made incredible statements in the midst of very challenging circumstances, right? Right? One that I would consider briefly would be like um, like a Jeremiah, you know. You guys know about Jeremiah, right? Preached for about 20 years before exile officially kind of happened when Babylon took its took, take over. But during those 20 years of him preaching, he had a scribe that helped him write down stuff. I'm not sure if you guys know, Jeremiah was a very intelligent man. He wrote a large chunk of the Old Testament. He wrote First and Second Kings. He wrote Jeremiah, and he wrote the book of Lamentations, right? And it's funny, if you read through Lamentations, you'll actually see situations and scenarios that he was lamenting for because of how he was treated in Israel when he proclaimed the word of the Lord, right? And Jeremiah during that time where he was preaching he had his words rejected he had a scribe write his words down and he handed them to the king and the king just sat down in the chair or his throne and just threw them all in the fire what was the word lord saying in the in the fire in the fire right he was in the company of other prophets and he gave a prophetic image they daunted him and talked trash about his image broke the image 
you know, went all against him, threw my man in a well where he was up to his neck in water, just enough to keep him alive. When he was in prison, they shack shackled my man. They gave him the bread of affliction. They did all kinds of things horrible to this man. And yet, let's just get a little bit of context. Let's read a little bit, of, a few pieces of Jeremiah here. Let's look at Lamentations first, chapter 3, verses 22 through 32. I'm going to encourage some of you guys to read the entire chapter because it is really beautiful. And actually, the whole book is very beautiful. And though the book is a lament, there's a great deal of hope in it. Starting off in verse 22, it says, Through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him. To the soul who seeks him, it is good that, no, that, it is good that one should hope and wait quietly. I'm going to read that again. It is good that one should hope and wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. Sometimes some of us are a little too vocal about the issues we're going through. I'm just saying. It is good for a man to bear the yoke in his youth and let him sit alone and keep silent because God has laid it on him. I love the fact that the Lord does not apologize for what he does. Some things he's placed before us to bear. And it's all right. Amen, church? Let him put his mouth to the dust. There yet, there may yet be hope. And let him give his cheek to the one who strikes him. And be full of reproach. For the Lord will not cast off forever. Though he causes grief, yet he shows compassion according to the multitude of his great mercies. Another phrase to consider, Philippians chapter 3, verses 7 through 11. But what things were gained to me, these things I counted loss for Christ. These are the words of Paul. Yet, indeed, I count all things as lost for the excellencies of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. I have to say that again. Yet, indeed, I count all things lost for the excellence of knowing of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and I count them all as rubbish, that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death if by any means I may attain the resurrection from the dead. The question I ask more often now is what causes men to say such things in the midst of such intense trials? Like, Honestly, we all know that God is faithful, right? We got, we got a bunch of verses memorized concerning faith, you know. If not, just, you know, run down Hebrews 11. There's a bunch there, you know. And so we understand God's faithfulness, but do we understand God's faithfulness? We have all the verses that talk about God's love, but do we understand God's love? Because when it is deeply understood, things really do change significantly for us. Because when you get that heavenly perspective, that eternal perspective, that knowledge and that confidence that God is going to make all wrongs right and he is faithful to his word, just like he's faithful to you, right? And we have all these prophetic words and sometimes they sit on the shelf, we don't go back to them, we don't think about them. And then we were like, man, I wonder what happened to that. When the Lord is like, 
I've been waiting for someone to actually respond to my word. To say, hey God, if you said this, I'm going to keep talking to you about this and keep asking for all the stuff for me to get there. Right? Let's take a step back real quick. Jeremiah chapter uh, 1. And this will be my last verse. And then I'm going to ask you guys to remember and we're going to pray and go home. Well, we'll pray, we'll eat and go home. Then the word of the Lord came to me saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak for I'm a youth. Message for the youth. God calls us when we're young. But the Lord said to me, do not say I'm a youth, for you shall go to all whom I send you, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have this day set you over the nations and over kingdoms to rule out or to root out, to pull down, to destroy, to throw down, to build, and to plant. Words given to Jeremiah. Now, I've had a couple of conversations with people this week about prophetic words and stuff like that. And some people feel a little bit caught off guard when God gives them a word that they don't like quite line up with. Anybody got one of those? And the, the thing that's really interesting is that many of the words that God gives more often than not, they come into fruition, sometimes more often than not, decades later. Jeremiah got this word in his youth, and there are some aspects of this word that causes you to kind of tilt your head a little bit because you can look at this and say, if I am, if I was going to receive Jeremiah's word, and I am above the nations and over kingdoms, and I'm rooting out and pulling down, throw down, destroy, build, plant. I think I'm, 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 thinking I'm doing something in the kingdom, right? And where, where did we talk about man was located? In a well, rejected by other prophets. The words that he shared was burned in a pot by kings, right? For all intents and purposes, it seems almost like his life was not victorious. But yet we're reading about him today, not that king. Amen? Some things just look different. And sometimes we have married ourselves to an idea of the gospel or married our ideas ourselves to an idea about Jesus that's not quite true nor accurate. And we need to consider the variables carefully. I promise you, and some of you have heard me make this statement before, many of the men in Scripture and many saints in the past have endured way more hell than we complain about today. Yet they never suffered burnout. Many of which did not complain to other people, though they did bend the Lord's ear, which I would encourage us to still keep doing. Bend the Lord's ear. Bring your complaints to the Lord. All right? So that he can encourage your heart if you need the encouragement or humble you if you need to be humbled. But no safer place than to be before the Lord. But again, many men have endured way more hell than we complain about when we're ready to throw in a towel. And my only invite to you is, what do you think anchored them? What realization did they come to that anchored them and know that that realization, that truth, still exists today to anchor believers today? That you can endure all kinds of hell, fire, and high water, and whatever trauma or issue that's going on around and about you. You can endure these things and still be anchored in truth. And see, I again, I, my wife was very much on it, though she was just basically writing on the calendar, saying that this is a season for us to redefine rest. What does that look like? Now, my elders love me a lot, and they're always beating me up. This, my elders, as well as many of you in this room who've known me for many years, have beat me up a lot about, Ron, are you resting? 
because I know I work really hard and run really hard. I, I appreciate all those voices in my life, but one of the things I had to recognize that I had this idea in my mind what resting looked like, right? You know, anybody else got an idea of what resting looks like? A sunny beach? Yes? Come on now, y'all Y'all not smiling. Y'all got to get your, your work, work your imagination about what does a, a place of rest look like. I was thinking, you know, sunny beach, you know, nice hotel room, jacuzzi or something like this. Something, something nice, right? And I had to come to the conclusion that the Lord is inviting us and inviting all of you, inviting the body of Christ at large into this place of a perpetual Sabbath. It just never ends. And it's funny how I started to get to this conclusion is this year I've had two scheduled vacations already. Both of them were like slammed, slammed horribly, right? I flirted with some of the context, so I'll give you guys a little bit of context now just to give you an idea. Now, my stuff that I endure has not, is nothing like some of these guys in Scripture. But at least if it can help us to bridge the gap, I'll share some, okay? So about a couple months ago, many of you guys know about nine-ish weeks-ish or so ago, my uncle passes away, right? That was the week before my vacation. Now, my family, not all walking with Jesus, needed a whole lot of help. So the week of our vacation, my wife and I was planning a funeral that I had to officiate, and it was the first funeral I officiated of a family member. You know, I've done funerals before, but I've never done one for a family member. And that was actually, uh, had a different challenge than I actually kind of anticipated, all right? And then some of you know that that same week that I had to facilitate this funeral, my father had to endure major surgery. And my father has been in the hospital for the past three months, right? And it's still there. On top of that, that major surgery happened the morning of that funeral. And then after that funeral, in between the funeral and the burial site, of which I was supposed to go do the intermit, I get into an accident with my mom and total my car. I am still borrowing Al Houck's car to this date. Thank you, Al. Can anybody say bad day? Bad week. We can all endure bad days and bad weeks. The thing that was significant about all of that, outside of the fact that some of you who knew what was going on, the love that you showed was extravagant. So thank you to all those who showed me tons of love, showed my wife and my kids tons of love during that season. It was a rough one, all right? And we're still dealing with the aftermath because obviously you guys know I don't have a car, you know? But what was beautiful in light of all of that was that I never lost sight of the Lord. And I was worshiping through the whole thing. People who were with me knew that I was feeling some kind of way because, you know, when you got all these things happening one after the other, you're kind of swirling for a little bit. Not swirling in sin, not swirling in despair, not swirling in anxiety, but swirling. Like, Lord, when is this going to stop? What's going on? Am I under attack? I just All these questions were coming up. But in the midst of it all, my Lord anchored me in peace. I never lost it. Never lost my peace. Never lost my cool. My kids never really felt the, the, the weight of what was going on outside of the fact that I was home a bit less because I've been working at my parents' house and being a little closer to my mother. All right? Why do I share this? Because I need to give you guys a hope that in the midst of these storms, and in my opinion, my storms are quite small in comparison to the storms that are coming. Do you have a grid to be anchored in hope, to be anchored by the Lord's faithful love, to be anchored in the promises that he said that are coming, even though you can't see it? Can you be anchored? Or are we all going to fall in this pity party or fit of despair just because things are not going the way we want them to go? See, the Lord sees the big picture and we don't. Our three-pound fallen brains cannot captivate the big picture. So stop trying. Does that make sense? So, man, that was a good sermon. Preacher, preach again. <laughs> So, I will continue next week. 
all right? Because this was good. I think this was more than enough. I think this was more than enough. I think God did a lot, all right? And so I, I'm going to give you all a homework assignment, all right? That homework assignment is to look up and look through and pray through the prophetic words you've gotten. Some of you guys, again, have done that dream interpretation workshop. When you dream, you have to write it down, all right? The Bible studies we just had, uh, we were talking about Daniel chapter 7, and in Daniel 7, Daniel highlights that he had a dream, and he rolled over out of his bed and wrote down the main points. It's in the Bible. Daniel rolled over and wrote down the main points. Don't get stuck in the weeds. Write down the main points. If Daniel did it, who is recognized in the scriptures of being the most uh, prolific of um, interpretation of dreams, next to Daniel, you guys can argue about which ones were, or not Daniel, Joseph, you guys can argue which one you think is better. The fact of the matter is that's what his habit was. And if the Lord speaks in dreams and you don't write things down, it shows that you have a lack of value of the word of the Lord. Write it down. If you don't pray through these things, you're not valuing what he said about you. Good grief. If teenage girls can get it together, when all of a sudden they get a love note and they just dwell over that note forever, can we get it together, please? Sorry. But you know what I'm talking about. Yes? Yes? Let us value... I'm sorry. So it's like, yo, that was funny. Okay. Can we value what he said? I'll continue this next week. So if you could just posture your hearts. I'm going to pray. And I'm going to ask the Lord to help us to remember. Amen. Father, I thank you that you are good and you do good. And I thank you that you have us all on this journey of being intoxicated with who you are. Lord, we want to be lost in you. We want to be found in you. We want you to, to move every aspect of our lives and be a governing factor of every decision that we make, every word that we say, every act that flows from us, oh God. Lord, we don't know you, but we know that we desire to know you more so. So, Father, we yield ourselves unto you and ask that by the Holy Spirit, we would hear you more clearly and be quicker to obey. Help us to value every way that you've spoken to us and help us to value what you've already said. Help us to value the written scripture, O oh Lord, and let us abide in it. Let it be in every conversation. Let it be on the meditation of our hearts and our minds, my God. Lord, we thank you for your love. We thank you for the testimonies that will be shared, O oh God, concerning all that you have done in this season, O oh God. Lord, we thank you, and we ask again that you be glorified. All God's people said, amen. So for all those who are watching online, welcome to our living room. Um, I'll be looking forward to seeing you all again when you're able to come out and visit. We do have refreshments in the back. Yes. And so please stick around, enjoy a refreshment, hug a neck, encourage somebody. And again, don't forget that assignment that I gave. Meditate on those prophetic words. You have a good day. Blessings.